and he knew no sin. And Peter said, he knew no sin, neither was there any guile found in his mouth. A sinless Savior. Now, how can Jesus Christ be sinless? All of us are born sinners. Well, there's only one way, of course, and that is for Christ to have been conceived in the womb of a virgin. That's the only way. Because the Bible says that when man fell in the garden and when Adam partook of the tree and disobeyed God, God looked at the whole human race as being bound up in Adam. May I say it? You were there in the Garden of Eden. You say, well, I don't remember it. Well, I don't either. But we were there. Yep. Just like the entire tree is in that acorn, so the whole human race was in Adam. And through Adam, God imputes Adam's sin to all of us. We are born under the condemnation of sin. We are born with the taint of sin that comes through human conception. That does not mean that sex is sinful. It simply means that all of us who are a product of our mother's and our father's involvement. All of us are born sinners. And so Jesus was exempt. He was the one who had the grand exception because he was conceived of a virgin. God did a miracle within Mary so that a perfect, sinless human being could be born. You see, there are several requirements Christ had to meet in order to be our Savior. One of them is he had to be a male. It says in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, regarding the coming Redeemer, he shall crush the head of the serpent. He had to be a human male, by the way. No other species would do. Angels could not die for our sin, as the book of Hebrews makes very clear. It had to be a man, and it also had to be a perfect man. Because the perfection was necessary for God to receive the sacrifice that was made. Sinless and perfect. And of course, he had to be God. And I will explain that in a subsequent message, why that was absolutely necessary. And so I want you to take your Bibles, and very briefly, we are going to look at two passages of Scripture that we normally read only at Christmas time, to our detriment, I might add. But in Matthew chapter 1, we have the story of the virgin conception of Jesus. Could I point out to you how concerned Matthew was to preserve that doctrine? In chapter 1, verse 16, he says, And to Jacob was born Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was born Jesus. You know, in English, that expression, by whom, could refer to male or female. Interestingly, in the Greek text, it is designated, it is female. To Mary was born Jesus. He wanted to make sure that we did not mistake in any way that somehow Joseph was the actual father of Jesus. Legal father, yes. Biological father, no. And then we read the story. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. You will call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. I want you to keep that passage open in your Bible, even though you also turn to Luke chapter 1, where we have a remarkable statement once again regarding this miracle. Luke chapter 1, the angel comes to Mary, explains to her that she is going to have a son called Jesus. He will be great. He will be the Son of the Most High. Verse 34, Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? 
And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and for that reason the holy offspring. Notice that. The holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. The only way for Jesus to be a man and yet to be perfect is for God to do a miracle that Mary might become pregnant with that which is holy. And Joseph was not Christ's father. Well, this is Pastor Lutzer, and of course, as you know, I am defending the uniqueness of Jesus over against all other options. And we're so glad for all those who listen to this broadcast, and I hope that you take the time to invite your friends to listen as well, as together we understand why Christ is the only one qualified to be our Savior. Dr. Erwin Lutzer, wrapping up part one of An Extraordinary Birth, the second message in his series, Christ Among Other Gods, a study in the defense of the Christian faith. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. Knowing why Christ has no competitors is key to defending your faith in a confused culture. Pastor Lutzer's book, Christ Among Other Gods, will be sent as our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. Just call us at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Online, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to Running to Win at Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next Running to Win.